We're now joined by Robert Kelly, Associate Professor from the Department of Political Science and Diplomacy at Busan National University, and he's speaking to us from Busan. Uh, North Korea has called Seoul's decision to suspend operations that is at the zone a dangerous declaration of war. Those are strong words. What do you make of them? Um, probably not a great deal. North Korea has threatened like this in the past. Posturing and swagger is sort of fairly typical for North Korean rhetoric. Um, what North Korea would like more than anything, I think, is to keep the zone open for reasons your correspondent pointed out, which is that it brings in a lot of hard currency. North Korea has a great deal of trouble raising currency, you know, hard currency elsewhere. And so this has been pretty crucial. So the rhetoric is probably just an effort to scare the South into coming back. Do you think it'll work, though? I mean, would it, what, will it, what will it take to bring North Korea back to the negotiating table? Well, North Korea most certainly will come back if there's a discussion about keeping Kaesong back open. I think the real issue is whether or not the South Koreans mean it this time about closing it. You know, there's been discussions for a while about keeping or about closing this in the South. People have been pointing out for years that the Kaesong um, complex acts informally as a subsidy to North Korea's programming what it would, of whatever kind, right? It's illicit behaviors. And so the real question, I think, is to the South, you know, does the South plan to actually close it or just suspend it temporarily? That's what happened last time. Well, let's stay on this for, for a moment. South Korea says hard currency earned from Kaesong is being used to, to do, by the North to develop weapons. Is there any truth to this, do you think? Well, sure. I mean, money is fungible, of course, right? So any foreign dollars coming into any foreign currency coming to North Korea can be used to pay for anything. But, you know, North Korea has a real problem importing external, you know, export, um, external goods and services, right? So the, the lifestyle of the Pyongyang elite, for example, the yachts and the high definition televisions and the top shelf liquor and stuff like that. All that has to be paid for in hard currency has to be raised. Somehow, North Korea raises a fair amount of money through illicit activities like methamphetamines and counterfeiting. But Kaesong has been excellent for North Korea because it's all legitimate money, which allows North Korea to wash its illicit funds as well. But you shut that down, then it becomes much harder for North Korea to get the imports it needs both for regime luxuries and also for the nuclear program. So yes, I think the South Koreans are right. Okay, well, I have more questions on that for sure. But uh, let's move on uh, to the execution of the military chief. What do you make of that? I think this is fairly typical of the purges that a new leader will go through. I do not actually believe that this is a sign that South Korea or North Korea is implicit, um, about to sort of undergo some kind of coup or military action or something like that. There's a great deal of speculation about whether or not this means that North Korea, when these, cur these purges and eliminations come up, does this mean that North Korea is sort of shaking as the regime in trouble? I don't actually think so. I think this is Kim Jong-un simply pushing aside the people who have been around for a while for people who are more loyal to him. Okay, many thanks for your thoughts this evening. Robert E. Kelly, their associate professor from the Pusan National University.